Hello everybody, I'm Chris Lynch. I'm a member of the Clouds Research and Development team and today I'm going to take you through a quick tutorial on Clouds. Clouds is a discrete event simulation tool. As such, you will see simulations dealing with systems such as ordering food at a fast food restaurant, purchasing tickets at a movie theater, or representing the progression of people at an amusement park. The goal of Clouds is to make simulations available to anyone and Clouds is accessible through any web browser and across mobile devices. Signing up for Clouds is very simple. All you have to do is provide first, last name, and an email address, and then create your own password. At the bottom of this page and the previous page are links to the user manual for Clouds, which provides in-depth details into different aspects of the tool. Now, signing into Clouds will take you to the Clouds home screen, which is divided into three categories. The first category, Simulations, contains base templates from which you can start to build your simulations without having to start from a blank canvas every single time. The second area of clouds is your personal cloud simulations. These are simulations that you have built and you can come back and make modifications or run your simulations or collect data or share them with other members of the community. The third area is the public cloud simulation. So these are simulations that other members of clouds have created and made public so that we can view them. These simulations can be run, they can be altered. Altering a simulation in the public area does not change the simulation for the person who created it originally. Um, but an altered version will show up then within your personal clouds area and you can make that simulation public or private and other members can then view or further expand upon a simulation that you've altered. Now we're going to take a quick look into just the basic template for clouds. The simulation is contained on the right side of the screen and the blocks within it can be moved by a simple click and drag process. Double clicking on a block will bring up its properties and you can make changes to each of the blocks and set new values. And holding your cursor over the name of the block will display its properties onto the screen. The left hand side of the screen provides us with everything we need for building or altering our simulations. The environment tab provides us with the high level components. What's the name of our simulation? What is the description of our simulation? The description is important when other members of clouds come to view the, our simulations. So they can start here and get a good idea of what our simulation is supposed to be representing before they run it and take a look at the results. The design tabs where you're going to spend most of your time while you're building a simulation provides all of the blocks you'll need for constructing or altering the existing simulations. These can be used by simple drag and drop interface and then clicking and dragging from one square to the square within another block will link the blocks together. Now another video will go more in depth into the specifics of building a simulation. The third area here is the replications. It lets us run one simulation run at a time or a group of runs at a time. This lets us do some different analysis techniques onto the output data. Now the final area here, tools, provides some counters so that we can collect real data in real time. Now this works as hitting start will start your timer and every time something happens that you want to record, such as an arrival to the system or somebody being processed through a uh, server, you just hit the plus and it'll add essentially that entity's arrival time to the counter and you just keep hitting the plus button every time something new happens. Now saving that counter, we'll, st we'll store it and then coming to manage, we can see the counter we just created is here and all of the previous counters that we've created are also here. And these counters can then be imported into the simulations and used as part of your input data. Now I'm going to save this simulation and return to the Clouds home screen. The simulation that I was just interacting with is now available under my personal Clouds area. And I'm going to hit the X in the upper right corner to delete it. Since I had also set that simulation to public, um, while it was there, it would have been also viewable by other members of the Clouds community. Now, the next video will go in-depth into the simulation building process within Clouds, but I hope that this has been informative. Thank you.